Hello and welcome to Children's Sunday School Online. I'm Miss Rebecca and I thank you for taking the time out of your day and to join me to get into God's Word. Merry Christmas! So it has been Advent season and we've been talking about different parts of Advent every week. We've talked about peace, We've talked about love and we've talked about hope. And we've learned different stories about those things throughout the Bible. We talked about with peace, how God's intention for his world, his vision for this world is that we all live in peace, that we're all kind to one another and that we all are generous with one another and we don't say mean things to one another, but instead we live in peace. And we said how even though that's not really the world that we live in right now, we you can be a peacemaker in your family, in the world. And so our job as followers of Christ is to go out and to show others how to live in peace and to be a peacemaker. We also talked about love and hope. We learned the story of Mary and Joseph. They were planning to get married. They were planning a wedding. They were not planning on having a baby. And yet the angel Gabriel showed up to both of them and said, do not be afraid. And he shared with them how God had a different plan for their lives and how they weren't 100% sure right away. But then because they loved one another and they loved God, they found love for this baby that was going to be their child. And because of their love for Jesus and, and because of their love for Jesus and God, they found hope. They found hope in the world and they found hope with one another. And that's something that we need to be practicing every single day day of our lives. We need to be showing other people love. We need to be showing others how to love. And we need to show them hope. When things are not going the way we want them to go, we need to know that there is Jesus in the world and we can share hope with others by sharing Jesus. Jesus is the light of our world. When times are dark, when we get sad, when we get overwhelmed, when we get frustrated, we need Jesus' light to shine in our lives so that we can give others peace, love, and hope. And so we also learn that because that we are followers of Jesus, not only is Jesus the light, but he's asking us to also be the light into the world. We're supposed to share Jesus, share Jesus's light. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to press pause and we're going to go to our first device and we're going to go to our second device and we're going to listen to um, Light of the World by Group Publishing. Listen to the words of the song. It's so beautiful and it's so perfect. It's not a Christmas song and yet it is the Christmas message. It is the message of Jesus to be the light into the world. Enjoy. This month, our focus or our faith word has been joy. And we've been hearing all these different kinds of stories about life in the Bible where people's lives were not turning out the way they wanted them to. And yet, they still found joy in them. Joy is a feeling of gratitude and happiness. And we think that, that, that we can only have joy when things are exactly the way we want them to, but we're learning through the Bible that that is not the case. We need to be looking for joy all the time. We need to be looking at the positive in times when we might wanna be a little negative. So what brings you joy? When life is overwhelming, crazy, or whatnot, what brings you joy? Christmas brings me joy. Christmas songs bring me joy. Baking cookies brings me joy. Um, being online with you guys brings me joy. Watching the veggie tales brings me joy. And so right now we're gonna go ahead and press pause. We're gonna go to our second device and we are going to listen to Light of Christmas. It's the veggie tales video and it's by Owl City and Toby Max. So I hope that this video brings you joy.
So if you ever want to wonder where are all of these songs, they stay on the website. If you go to the website, the song, the pelumc.org website, Stacy keeps all the songs up there for us so you guys can continually go back to them and watch them and look at them. If you, for some reason there's one that we've watched before and it's not on there, let me know and I can always have Stacy add it. So I want you guys to be enjoying yourselves and watching the music videos and receiving joy from them. Okay, so our Bible verse this month is from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 47. And it says, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. Let's rejoice in God our Savior. Let's rejoice in this story, this Christmas story that we hear every single year. And we hear it every single year because it's so important. It's so important to remember the birth of Jesus. And not just that he was, that he was born, but why was Jesus born? That is what we need to remember. And so right now we are going to go ahead and go to our scripture reading and that's coming from Miss Sherry. We are going to be in the book of Luke. We're going to be in chapter 2, so that's a big number 2, verses 1 through 7. So go get your Bibles and listen and follow along to our scripture verse today. Hi everybody, it's Miss Sherry. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to Sunday School. If you are ready to go, I am ready. We've got a great story for you today. Straight from the Bible, if you want to grab your deep blue Bible, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. So let's get started. Jesus' birth. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. So a guest room is like an inn back then. You've heard the expression, no room at the inn. Well, that's what happened to Mary and Joseph when they went to have baby Jesus. And when I think back on this story, a couple things come to mind. But I think about um, how much we all try to make the perfect Christmas and to make things really, really special. Uh, we try really hard to make sure that we have special traditions and that we find out what everybody wants for Christmas and everybody really hopes that they get everything that they wanted. But when I think about Mary and Joseph, Joseph and Jesus, um, they probably really didn't expect that Mary and Joseph were going to have baby Jesus on the road after they had been traveling and to have him um, in a manger and to have to wrap him in, in cloth the way that they did um, in, a, in a stable with animals. But that's what happened. And it wasn't perfect, but it was perfect. It may not have been planned, but it was just as God had intended. So sometimes we really want a certain toy. We really want to have the best day ever. And then something happens and it was unexpected. But there are still moments of joy to be found no matter what we are going through. We can go through hard times. I'm sure that their journey for Mary and Joseph was rather difficult. And in the end, God's plan was still perfect. And we have this perfect baby boy, even though the circumstances and the way that he came to be born may not have been what they had planned. So hopefully you enjoyed that story today. It's the story of Jesus' birth. It's, it's why we celebrate Christmas. It's amazing and it's a miracle. So I think the important thing to remember is to find joy um, everywhere and to find joy in little things. And even when things aren't perfect or the way that we had planned, we still have things to be grateful for and to be happy about and to be joyful for and to celebrate. Miss Sherry, thank you for reading us the Christmas story. Um, I think, you know, we read it every year, and every year I get excited for it, and I just think it's a beautiful story. And so now we need to talk about it and kind of dive into it a little bit more. But before we do that, let's go to the Lord for a word of prayer. 
Oh, dear Lord, we thank you for your birth. We thank you for this story. We thank you for reminding us of how important your birth is um, every single year. And Lord, um, even though we think that we know the story, allow us to open up our heads and open up our hearts to hear your word. Allow me to say whatever it is you want me to say, Lord, and allow the kids to hear what you want them to hear. You, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so the Christmas story. So Mary and Joseph had these plans, right? They had these plans to get married, and then, then they found out they were going to have a baby. And so their plans totally changed, right? And the angel Gabriel came to them and said, Fear not, for you have been chosen by God to be the parents of his son, baby Jesus. And he is going to be a king, and he is going to save us from all of our sins. And so Mary and Joseph hear this, and they say, Sign me up. I'm your servant. Event, do what you want me to do. And so now they have started making all kinds of new plans, right? Now they are thinking about plans for a baby. Now, I don't know if you have known a lot of people that have had babies, but in our world today, people make tons of plans to have babies. So not only um, when they find out that they get pregnant, sometimes they have like these big reveal things to find out if it's a boy or a girl and friends come over and they record it and they pop a balloon and all other kinds of crazy stuff. They have baby showers where family and friends come together and they give the mom and the dad gifts and that to welcome, to be excited for this baby clothes and diapers and all kinds of baby stuff they also meet with doctors they pick out which hospital they want to go to they make a birth plan and then not only that but then they go home pack a bag so when the baby does come they are prepared and they are ready all kinds of plans are made for the birth of babies Mary and Joseph are just like, were just like people today. They would have started to make plans. Now their plans would have been completely different. Now remember, Joseph was a carpenter. So one of his plans that he might have done was to be finishing up the house that he was building for he and Mary for after they got married and after the baby was born and, and finishing up that quickly. The other thing that Joseph might have done is he probably made a baby's bed, maybe a high chair, and so that was part of his plans. And so Mary would have been making plans too. Her plans would not have been uh, meeting with doctors doctors and hospitals, but instead she would have most likely had her baby at home. And the women from the community would have come into her home when it was time to have the baby and they would have helped her. So those were Mary and Joseph's plans. And yet, shocker, everything is going to change again. So all of the plans that they made to bring baby Jesus into the world were not going to go as they had originally planned and they had originally thought. Instead, the government comes out at the time and says that they're going to be doing these tax lists. They wanted to get a record of all of the people in the land, who they were married to, how many kids they had, what their job was, what they did for a living, how much money they earned, and then they would also have to pay taxes back to the Roman government. Now in this time period, what they would do is they would have to travel back to their family's original homeland. And so for Joseph, Joseph's original city would have been Bethlehem. And so Joseph was planning to journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, many of you might be saying, well, this sounds crazy. Who cares? But, you know, we still do these censuses today. In fact, we just did one this past year. And so what our government does is they send us a piece of paper in the mail and we either fill out that paper and then stick it back in our mailbox or better yet, what we did is we got online. We said, yep, Mr. Jason, Rebecca, Jaden, and Jalen, we're this old. We do this for a living. And we answer all of their answers all their questions and then we hit submit and then off it goes to the government and now they know all the of our information but obviously for Joseph he was not able to do that he didn't have the internet he didn't have the mail and so he had to journey back to his original city 
Now, at this time period, Joseph very likely could have gone back to Bethlehem all by himself and not take Mary. And he could have just told them he was getting married and he was going to have a baby and he lived in the town of Nazareth, that he was a carpenter and however much money he made. But instead, because it was so close to the time for Mary to give birth, he most likely decided, or they decided together, for Mary to go with Joseph so he could take care of her. Now, the distance between Bethlehem and Nazareth is about 90 miles. So for us today, we think, well, that's not super far. Just hop in the car and there you go. Well, that's not the way it was back then, was it? In fact, they they say that it probably took anywhere between four to seven days of traveling. And they would have had to most likely travel by foot. And the road from Nazareth to Bethlehem was not an easy road. There were lots of hills, lots of rough terrain. And so it would have probably been a really hard journey. Now, did you notice in the story that Miss Sherry read, they did not talk about a donkey carrying Mary. And yet, whenever we tell the story, we always picture a donkey. Well, the donkey is not actually in the Bible. That's not in here. But because we know about the history, that most likely Mary would have traveled by donkey from Nazareth, from Nazareth to Bethlehem. She was too far along in her pregnancy to walk the entire way herself. And they didn't have enough money, most likely, to have afforded a horse or a bigger animal. So the donkey would have been the way that they would have most likely traveled and so she would have ridden on the donkey and they probably would have even had like a little satchel to put their belongings and stuff in and that the donkey would have carried that for Mary and Joseph so off they go on this long journey of about four to seven days over rough terrain and hills just to go back to the town of Bethlehem to be counted for the government Whew, I just find that overwhelming. I know when I'm planning for a trip with my family, I think it's exhausting just riding in a car. I cannot imagine walking and traveling with a donkey for four to seven days. So they arrive in the town of Bethlehem. And remember, they're not the only people in Bethlehem. There's people from all over the place coming to also be counted in this census, in this tax list. And so they show up and they knock on doors and they try, they're looking for a place to stay and there's nowhere. Every place is full. Now remember, Mary and Joseph probably would have traveled very slowly. So other people were already there and they got all the good places to stay. Now, when we travel, what do we do? We get on our phones and we, you know, type it in on the internet and we make a reservation, we put in our credit card and then we show up at the hotel or we're at wherever and we say, yep, here we are, no problem. But back then, they didn't do that. They didn't have reservations. People would travel, show up, and hope and pray that there was a place for them to stay. And unfortunately for Mary and Joseph, the Bible tells us that there was no room. The place was packed. So thankfully, thankfully, somebody took kindness on them and said, hey, out back, I have a place where I keep my animals, and uh, I guess you can stay there. So Mary and Joseph go to a stable or a barn or some place where the animals would have slept, and that is where they make their home. Now, some of us might be saying, well, that sounds horrible. But if you can think about it, in their journey for four to seven days, they were most likely sleeping underneath the stars and on the hard ground. So maybe, maybe for them, even though it wasn't a hotel or an inn or a fancy place to sleep, where they were staying with the animals, it most likely would have been warm from the other animals in there. They would have had a shelter over them to keep them dry from any kind of weather. And, and so maybe I think that even in all the chaos and all the confusion, that they were just so joyful for some place to lay down 
and to rest. They must have been exhausted. And so for any place that was available for them was better than nothing. So then the Bible goes on to say that while Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, it was time for Mary to have her baby. Now here again, I don't think this was a part of Mary's plan. She would have made a plan to have that baby in her home with the ladies with her community to help her. But instead, she's in a strange town, not with her friends, not with her family, in a barn, and with animals. And this, this is where God decides that he wants his son, Jesus, to be born. And so the Bible says that she was there in the stable and baby Jesus came and she wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger. Jesus, Jesus is God's son. God's son, the king of all kings, is born in a stable with animals and then placed in a manger to sleep. Now, a manger we think of is, of course, the place where baby Jesus slept. But a manger was actually a food trough. So they would have, would have had it cleared out. And in order to feed the animals, they would have stuck the food in that. The animals would have come over, eaten out of it. So it was kind of like a plate or a bowl for the animals. And that is what Mary, the mother of God's son, makes for a bed for her sweet baby Jesus. Again, I'm sure this was not part of her plan. I'm sure Joseph had a beautiful crib that he made with his own hands for his son. And yet, that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. I, 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 I just think that we all have these perfect pictures of what we want something to be like. I know we do for Christmas. We have a picture in our, of our head of what Christmas is. Christmas is a Christmas tree, baking cookies, getting presents, giving presents, wrapping presents, watching movies, being with friends, being with family, coming to church on Christmas Eve, having an elf on a shelf, having Santa. All of these things are what in our head, when we close our eyes and say, what is Christmas? Those things pop in our head. And those are all wonderful, wonderful things. And we should all love those things and we should all enjoy those things. But friends, that's not Christmas. That's not what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about a baby boy born in a stable and came to save our world from our sins. Christmas is about a baby that shows up and teaches us to have peace, to have love, to have hope, and to have joy, and not to keep it inside of ourselves, but to share it with other people. Maybe this year Christmas is not going to look the way you want it to look or it, have it be the way you want it to be. Think of this story. Think of Mary. Think of Joseph. The first Christmas was not the way they wanted their son Jesus to be born. And yet, in all of that, they found peace, they found love, they found hope, and they found joy in a stable with animals. And they were able to see that God had this amazing plan for their lives. And even though it wasn't the way they wanted it to be, they knew it was the way God wanted it to be. And God was with them, even though it wasn't picture perfect. Though I see Mary holding that sweet little baby Jesus, and I think when she looked at him, Everything looked perfect. 
everything looked perfect because when we have Jesus in our hearts and we have Jesus in our lives, we're able to look through all of the chaos, confusion, sadness, frustration, and see peace and see love and see hope and see joy. Okay guys, let's go ahead and go to celebrate wonder. Hi friends, it's Abigail. Our story today is about the birth of Jesus. Before I first heard this story, I imagined Jesus being born in the most amazing place. I thought his family would have the best room and a beautiful and huge mansion. Jesus was so important. But the truth is that Jesus' birth was not easy. His parents, Mary and Joseph, had to take a long journey right before he was born. When they arrived, they couldn't find a room for his birth. Instead, Mary and Joseph had to share space with animals. Right after Jesus was born, he was laid in a manger. A manger is a big bowl that animals eat out of. Can you believe Jesus slept in one of those? Despite the situation, there was such joy and relief because the promise of God was fulfilled and Jesus was born. This story teaches us that even when things are hard, we have to keep going because joy is often on the other side. When I was younger, my whole family came together to go on a camping trip. There were 15 people going on the trip. We had to hike to the top of a mountain. Finally, we got to the top and realized there was only one small cabin and there were only three beds. How are all 15 of us going to fit? While some of my cousins got really sad, my aunt looked at us and said, we can make this work and it will be fun. It's not the perfect situation, but it can still be really good because we are together. She was right. We played games and had a giant sleepover. I found so much joy in being with my family and was so thankful to God for all of us being together. In my story, there was joy even when the situation wasn't what we planned. And there is a lot of joy in this Bible story too. The joy of having a new baby, of finding a place to stay, and of seeing God's promises come true. Jesus was here. Even when joy is hard to find, we can see it in unexpected places. That's a wonderful gift. Now it's time for you to wonder. So what's our challenge this week? What are we going to do to take this story and apply it to our lives? How can we share it with other people? Your challenge is, is to find joy all the time. When plans change, when things don't work out the way you want them to work out, when you're overwhelmed, when you're frustrated, take a deep breath and then look and see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, even when you're overwhelmed, you have the ability to realize he's with you and that you are not alone. And he has a plan for you and it's a plan that you and I might not understand. But we can find joy in whatever we're going through because we know, we know that we are not alone. Jesus lives with us in our hearts and in our minds. And so your challenge this week, to find joy in everything. And what I can promise you is, this is actually a really hard challenge. And so what I can promise you is, is that if you are not talking to Jesus regularly and having constant dialogue with him, it's gonna be hard to find joy. So talk to Jesus, pray to Jesus. And when you feel like you can't, there's nothing good going on, ask Jesus to enter your heart and to help you find joy. And I promise you will find something to be joyful about. All month long, we have talked about changes and, and how we have this plan for our lives. And then what we realize is, is God's plan for our lives is so much better. 
The plan for Mary and Joseph to be Jesus' mom and dad is awesome and it's amazing and it's written in this book for all of us to hear today. So if God had this amazing plan for Mary and Joseph, God has an amazing plan for you. And you might not understand it fully, but I promise you, he has one for you. So again, go to Jesus and talk to Jesus. This month, if you didn't real this week, if you didn't realize it, our our focus today is joy is finding joy in everything that we do. So we're gonna light our fourth candle because it's the fourth Sunday of Advent and we're gonna light our fourth candle and we are gonna remember to be joyful. Let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, when we don't understand what's going on in our world and in our lives, help us to see you and help us to find joy. We know that you love us, we know that you're with us and help us to help others to see you and us. And so maybe when their world is not going well, that they can also find joy. Friends, it's been a great Christmas and it might not be exactly what you have planned, but we remember Jesus' birth. And Jesus came to this earth for you and for me because he loves us. And so I pray that you have a very, very Merry Christmas. And thank you so much for being with me today and for being a part of our children's online worship. It's so important to stay connected with, with you and I and Miss Sherry, and most of all, to stay connected to the Lord through his word. Okay, so Miss Sherry, if you could go ahead and pray for us, I would really appreciate it. And now let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so grateful for all of the joys and blessings in our life. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for uh, giving us the gift of your word. And thank you for giving us each other. Thank you for everyone who's joined us in person or online for Sunday school and for us to continue to celebrate your birth and your arrival. We are grateful for you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So to wrap up, um, just a couple things. Next week, uh, we will have a children's online worship video, only online. There's nothing in person. It's online only. I'm actually going to take a day off. I'm going to enjoy uh, next Sunday, the 27th, with my family. And so I'm not going to be in the building. I'm going to be at home. I'm going to be with my kiddos and my husband. And so the only place to catch us would be online. So go ahead and check us out. The other thing is, is I know a lot of you are still only worshiping online even for Christmas Eve. And you, you are important. And you staying connected to God and you staying connected to the Christmas Eve service is really important. So I have made, I am making a children's Christmas Eve online service. So there's an adult one. Go ahead and check it out. There's going to be some great music and stuff on that one too. But I do invite you to watch the Children's Christmas Eve online um, service. So it's gonna be on the 24th, it's gonna be live, it's, so you can watch it. And there's gonna be, some of your friends are gonna be on it and they're gonna be sharing some music and some scripture. And I think it's gonna be a great service and a great way for you guys to stay connected with one another. I know we wanna be together. I know we wanna be in the same building. But things change. And we got to roll with that change. And so we're going to find joy in having a children's Christmas Eve online service. It's going to be different, but it's going to be wonderful because you guys are in it and Jesus is with us. So I hope you guys enjoy that. So our third and fourth song, I'm really excited. So our third song today is going to be Mary's Boy by Toby Mac. It's a great one. It's kind of got like a little island feel to it so you can dance. And then the fourth one is going to be Oh, What a Glorious Night by the Sidewalk Prophets. This is my favorite, 
favorite Christmas song of all times. It's I just love it. So I wanted to share that with you. So again, song number three, Mary's Boy by Toby Mac, and song number four, Oh What a Glorious Night by the Sidewalk Prophets. Hey guys, remember this season that Jesus is the light, and we are called to share his light to everybody. Go out in the world today, tomorrow, this week, next week, every day, and show people peace, show people love, show people hope, and show people joy. Because we have Jesus every single day of our lives. We have Jesus. Share him and share all of the wonderful things that come along with Jesus. All right, guys, have a great day great Sunday and have a very Merry Christmas and I hope to see you guys on uh, Children's Christmas Eve service online. Bye everybody.